All right, guys, here it is, finally, finally, an instructional on how to make you a better wood splitter in a very short amount of time. So I'm gonna try to keep it brief so you could watch this and go get the job done right after the video. Let's get it done. First and foremost, let's get the elephant out of the room. If you recognize me from my TikToks, um, no big deal, I just need you to know something. I am a fitness model on the side, that's what I also do for another job. None of the muscle that I have is re a result of wood splitting. You also don't need any muscle to be good at splitting wood. So don't make too much of a causation there. If you split wood without muscle, you can be just as good. The muscle is not gonna make that much of a difference. So don't worry, you do not have to be very muscular. I mean, I'm not super muscular, but you don't even have to be muscular at all to be a really efficient wood splitter. So don't worry about that. That is not a part of this. I just can't take it all off because I'm going to split wood, because I'm going to cut trees. Um, it stays with me, so it's just a part of it. I can't schluff that off every time I go work. So the muscle, not an important part of it, all right? Now, I'm gonna go ahead and guess you were that young kid who was, or maybe even yesterday, who was trying to get your ax out of the wood. Why it's getting stuck all the time, it's likely because you are using too narrow of an ax. This is likely more similar to what you're using. If your ax is this narrow, it is for chopping, not splitting. That is not to open the wood up, it's for to cut into the side of the wood at a cross angle against the grain. So we're not doing that today. We're not chopping wood in this video, we're splitting wood. So for today's purpose, you're gonna need an ax or you're gonna need to go get an ax that has more of a flared head. And if it has the head of the ax has a nice flare to it, that aggressive gradient there, that means you are using the right ax. So make sure you have a splitting ax first. Very important, four pound, six pound, eight pound, somewhere in there will be fine, but you need there to be a flared head. So make sure you're not using an ax that looks like this. You need one that looks like this. Now this is where things have gotten a little bit weird on TikTok, but I promise it's not an innuendo. You really can lube up the head of your ax, not even joking. I know it sounds strange, it sounds weird. It's very commonplace to do that, and it will help the ax head pop in and out of the wood without getting stuck. It doesn't mean it'll never get stuck, it just means it'll be far less likely to. Less friction, it'll help it pop back out if you don't split it on a swing. So, I use ax head oil, but it can be kind of pricey, a little bit expensive, and kind of silly when you can just use a universal lube like WD-40, or you could use beeswax, gun oil, et cetera, et cetera. Just keep in mind you wanna use something that's not gonna, of course, promote any rusting on the head of your ax, but I'm not even joking, we really do um, need to promote this ax head to be a little bit slipperier, so if you can lube it up a little bit before every session, it'll help a ton, and it'll avoid some rust, so it's a win-win. Okay, now is the more fun part, something you can apply right now. I am going to be the form police. Do not be the person swinging an ax one-sided with your arms separated and hands separated. We are not using it as a unilateral movement. Swinging from one side is not it. So if that's kind of how your swing looks over the shoulder, toss that out right away. We are not using that method. Erase it, we're gonna start fresh. Now what we are going to focus on, what we are going to focus on is a wide base, just a little bit outside your shoulder width with your feet. I know you guys can't see me perfectly, but just wide enough and we're going to practice standing tall and sliding that top hand down to your bottom hand to create energy and force as you pull that ax down. So a wide base, spread apart hands, stand tall, pull down as this top hand slides down. Let's put one swing into practice from the front. We're gonna rock to create energy, stand tall, pull down, slide down, pull down. Perfect. I'm gonna use a lighter ax to explain this just to be safe, but remember, this is not a splitting ax, this is a chopping ax. So I'm happy we know that now, so you guys don't get confused. However, here's an important part about any powerful movement, especially like a vertical jump. Think of this as like the opposite of a vertical jump. We are not needing for a vertical jump to squat all the way down and jump. You're not gonna create much force like that. That length tension relationship it's too aggressive in that situation. So what we want instead, similar to the opposite of a vertical jump, we're doing a similar movement this way. So we are going to create energy at the top by hinging at the hips, barely squatting, but hinging at the hips and crunching and pulling 
at the same time. So this is how it will look as you pull down. Stand tall, stand tall. So you're hinging at the hips, crunching and pulling with your lats as you come down. It is a very linear pathway here as we pull. We are going to pull down. It's a down motion, not an out motion. So we want all that energy coming straight through as we pull down. So you're using a little bit of body weight, a lot of lats, a little bit of crunching, and a lot of hips. Down. So we're gonna see that in motion from the side now. Now I intentionally chose this piece for you guys as this demonstration for this one because it's not gonna split in one try. It's very waterlogged and it has a giant knot. So that'll give us a couple chances to see the motion from the side over and over. Remember, wide stance, rock, get the timing right, stand tall, pull, down. I'm actually going to break this knot a lot faster than I thought, huh? Alright, let's get our last couple swings in. Or one. So you can see it's not a full squat at the bottom. Not a full squat. Now this next mistake is super common. Um, and I see a ton of people do it. They start pulling the ax down and they start trying to force the movement when the ax is still fighting gravity. You're losing so much energy like that and wasting a ton of energy. And you're not gonna be accurate. So we don't want either one of those things. Instead, we are only initiating that explosive powerful pull right when the ax gets sort of to the apex of that turn. That rotation over the top, we are pulling from here. When it gets tall, then we pull. We're not pulling from back here. You're gonna waste a ton of energy and you're gonna be glancing off of stuff. We don't want you losing a shin, a pinky, a knee, an arm, a friend. So, don't start pulling until you're vertical. That's when the movement starts. Okay, here it is, the last tip of the day, and then you guys can just go off on your own and get this stuff done. Now, the hardest thing to run into is a big water-soaked or challenging piece that is very large, and maybe you can't split it down the middle because it's just too big, um, and I'm not trying to turn this into a TikTok. I'm serious, it's gonna happen. Um, and you don't need to be dramatic about it like I am in my videos. You can just do it the easy way. One, you can use a wedge. These wedges are designed to be hammered in with mauls. A maul has the back of a sledgehammer and should, should allow you to use that same accuracy to hammer this in until the wood splits on its own. You must, must wear protective glasses. Mine are over here, I'm not gonna grab them because you guys get the picture. You must wear protective glasses when swinging metal on metal, okay? Two, the maul. A bigger axe with a more aggressive head. It's heavier, usually between eight and 12 pounds. I swing an eight pounder and I'm 200 pounds. So a maul is gonna be a lot heavier and it's gonna help you get through some of these heavy pieces. However, you're not gonna be able to swing a maul all day, so you might wanna make sure you have a maul and a splitting axe. That way you're not swinging only heavy. Here's another hack with the maul or with any axe really, is you don't have to split down the middle. You can take advantage of the corners and edges to cut off smaller, pieces without being super dramatic like I am in my videos once again. So remember, you don't have to cut it down the middle. That's just for fun. It's for entertainment for me. I like the challenge. But if it's time to get some shit done, I can make this whole thing into many little pieces like this just by glancing around the edges. Just be very aware that when you're swinging, you want to be swinging straight down towards the ground, not in a circular motion towards you. We're swinging down and away. That way, at the apex, at the maximum point of power, you are hitting down, not toward yourself, down. And get you one of these puppies. Find you a big stump that you don't care about, that you can put down to chop on top of. The rigid impact of the log being crunched down on something hard means it will not absorb all of that energy into the ground. So don't swing against soft ground. Um, and it'll also protect your axe head so that your bit doesn't get all softened by impact into dirt and sand. So what we're wanting instead, or gravel, whatever, but what we're wanting instead is that rigid impact. 
it gives you a safe place for that axe head to cut into without doling it too much. And then last, it saves your back. A hundred of these isn't as bad as a hundred of these all the way from the ground. After a while, that excessive extension you're doing to go all the way to the ground on every swing is really gonna wear and tear on your back. So that's it, we did it, we're ready to go. You're ready to go crush some fucking pieces of wood. Have fun, be safe, wear glasses if you use a wedge. Keep that in mind.